Throughout history, there have been many iterations and different reincarnations of Princess Zelda, all with their own storylines, all with their own complex feelings and emotions of what's going on around them. She is a symbol of wisdom across all of her entries in the series. So it definitely comes as no surprise that fans were ecstatic when the Legend of Zelda series finally had a game where Zelda is the protagonist. Now, of course, I'm sure I could go on and on about how excited I am for the game, how excited I am for Zelda to be finally getting her own entry. How excited I am to use tables. Yeah, that's not what this video is about. Today we're talking fashion, we're talking looks, which Zelda looks the best and which one looks the worst. Huh? Now, of course, this is nothing to say about their characters, because all of these Zeldas across the timeline are amazing characters, but today we're just gonna be doing a silly little video where I talk about their fashion and the looks. But before we go ahead and adventure into the world of Zelda fashion, make sure to go down below and hit that like button if you are excited for Zelda to finally be getting her own game, and of course it's dangerous to go alone, so make sure to hit that subscribe button too. But wow, there are a lot of Zeldas in this timeline to get through, so we better go ahead and get started. So play a Pona song and saddle up y'all, because we are riding straight into the world of Zelda the fashion. <laughs> So of course, we gotta start at the beginning. We're gonna be talking about our Zelda from Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, and this Zelda is unlike any other Zelda that we have ever gotten in the series, which is odd because she's the first one. I always happen to think of this Zelda as Damsel in Distress Zelda, and I don't know if it's because of the look or just because she's not really in the game other than saving her, but look y'all, she looks sweet, she looks nice, and this dress looks like she is straight out of Sleeping Beauty. Make it pink, make it blue, make it pink, make it blue. No, not pink. This of course is one of our rare Zeldas that doesn't happen to be blonde, and honestly, I don't hate the hair, I just don't know if I love the hairstyle, the bob doesn't necessarily work on this, I don't think. But hey, I love the head jewelry, I love the pearl necklace, y'all know I love an accessory. Look y'all, Link to the Past is easily one of my favorite games in the entire series. Her look in Link to the Past is a classic. This is one of those looks that when you think of Princess Zelda, you think of this look. It is absolutely iconic. I mean, we absolutely have to talk about these gold accessories, the armbands, the crown, all the little gold plating on the outfit. I mean, it just looks so good. And don't even get me started on the Triforce earrings. I love them so much and I want them myself. Zelda in Link to the Past actually does have another outfit. It's like this little blue number that's kind of giving little town. It's a quiet village. But you know what? I am not mad at it. Zelda looks really good in blue and it's not often that we see her in blue, so I really do appreciate this. Also, you cannot tell me that she does not look very demure in this outfit. Let's talk about one of the most iconic versions of Zelda of all time, and we not only get to talk about one Zelda, we get to talk about two Zeldas. Because in Ocarina of Time, guess what? We go through time, and you get both Child Zelda and Adult Zelda. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Young Zelda, and honestly, I don't really have that much to say about this outfit. I do think that it is pretty solid, it's pretty good, I think that it is a classic staple outfit for Zelda. The only negative thing that I would possibly say is that the sleeves are a little long for me, and I don't love the fact that they kind of like are puffy at the top and then kind of like tighten out at the bottom near the wrist. I don't love that, but hey, I mean, I'm not complaining. As for adult Zelda, we have this very classic look from Zelda once again, not too different from her Link to the Past look, minus the cape, and we have some long gloves it appears like, and honestly, I do like the long gloves. I prefer those over the long sleeves. Also, I love the design on the front of her dress. I think that's great. I love the gold armor plating on the shoulders. I think that's incredible. I love whenever they give like an armor kind of look to Zelda, but more on that later. Moving on to Zelda from Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, honestly, you wouldn't even really be able to tell what kind of thing she's wearing just from the game itself, so let's go ahead and take a look at the artwork. Once again, we just kind of stick with this classic look for Zelda. I do appreciate that they brought the cape back. I think the cape was a vital moment. I'm sad they took it away in Ocarina of Time, so I'm very happy to see that they brought it back. The Triforce earrings, still impeccable. The gold plating on the shoulders, still great. They kept the gloves. They kept all the aspects of this outfit that I really, really enjoyed from the previous entries and I'm so happy that they did. Yeah. 
Y'all, this game is my childhood right here. I love talking about Wind Waker. I can make a whole video about Wind Waker. So Wind Waker, Zelda, and Tetra hold a very special place in my heart. I just have such a love and such an appreciation for them. Also, for those who haven't played, I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler alert, but yes, they are the same person. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Tetra because you do meet her first in the game. And honestly, let me tell you, I love this Cindy Lou Who swirl she's got going up on top of her head. And I wish we could see hairstyles like this in real life because this is fierce. As for the rest of the outfit, I mean, meh, it's nothing too crazy. I love the accents of red and like the scarf around the neck and like the fabric belt. I think that's cool. These shorts are way too big. Also, Tetra has some dainty feet. I mean, I can barely even see the shoe. I couldn't even really tell you what kind of shoe this is. I mean, I see it's a sandal, but like I can barely see it. As for Toon Zelda, we do get a bit of a variation from the normal Zelda design that we had gotten used to in the last couple iterations of her. I love the little white bits in the hair. I think that those are really, really cute. I love the gold belt. That's a little bit different than what we've seen. And yeah, other than the fact that she's wearing three big grapes around her neck, I think the only other thing that people don't talk about with Toon Zelda is that she is wearing eyeshadow. Like, if you want to talk about having your makeup look demure, I mean, just having this very light blue eyeshadow, I'm here for it. I love it. Moving on to Four Swords Adventure Zelda, which is a Zelda that I don't find myself thinking about that frequently, given that she's really not that much in the game. I would say this is one of the biggest deviations we've gotten in terms of physical appearance for Zelda in a hot minute. I mean, the outfit is very, very similar to a lot of other iterations that we've got, so it's not the outfit that I'm looking at. They kind of can't decide in these first couple ones if they want to stick with the blonde hair or if they like to go back and forth between the blonde and then the dirty blonde to brownish kind of hair for her, but I don't know. I mean, the hair looks fine. Let's talk about the bow. Some designer in the room clearly was a fan of the Powerpuff Girls, Blossom in particular, and was like, you know what, I'm just gonna incorporate this into Zelda, see if it works, see if it sticks, and girl... But judging by the fact that this design has never come back in any further iterations of Zelda, I'm guessing they didn't like it that much themselves either. Y'all, Minish Cap is underrated. This game is so underrated. I enjoy the hell out of Minish Cap. I love playing this game so much. Personally, I'd love to see it get a remake or remaster. That all being said, Truthfully, honestly, I don't really have anything different to say about Minish Cap Zelda than I did about Toon Wind Waker Zelda, because they're very, very similar, if not almost exactly the same. So honestly, you could just copy and paste and apply anything I said about Toon Zelda to Minish Cap Zelda as well. If anything, I probably just did this segment just so I could talk about how much I love Minish Cap. <laughs> Girl, we need, NEED to talk about Twilight Princess Zelda. Just everything they did with this design is absolutely incredible and immaculate and impeccable. I, if, if, if anyone has any critiques about this Zelda, I will throw them in the trash can. I mean, for me, it is a number of things. With Zelda, we have seen a lot of use of pink in the outfits, and for this, we swapped over to a nice purple, which gives her this, like, regal kind of look and feel. Also, this is, like, the first time that Zelda has gone with, like, this dark brown kind of hairstyle, and I am not at all mad about it. This long braid in the back is everything to me. Absolutely everything. And I love the gold details, the shoulder plates, the gold accents in the hair. I just think all of this is so incredible. So incredible, in fact, that I am going to overlook the shoes. <laughs> All right, y'all, full transparency, if you're gonna allow me to be vulnerable for just one second of today's video, I have not played Spirit Tracks in a very, very long time. I barely remember anything from this game, and I have not even looked at this Zelda until just now making this video. My awful memory of this game aside, I definitely think that Ghost Zelda is one of the most iconic things about this game, and probably one of the most memorable things about this game, as it is definitely iconic to see Zelda kind of assisting you in your adventure as a little spirit on the side, but also with her armor. I think that's amazing. Also, did you know that Zelda and Link are like 
a thing in this game. Like, they, they've always been a thing, but they're like an official thing. Like, they held hands, and that means something. I mean, this right here is more attention than some of these links will ever get in their lifetime. But honestly, again, it's not very different to Toon Zelda. It is just very, very similar. The only thing that's kind of different in this, now that I'm looking at this art, I don't know if it's this art in particular, but she has green hair. Is that green? I can't tell. Maybe that because she did. I don't know. Y'all, sorry, I just needed to shut up for a second and give this Zelda the respect that she deserves. I love Skyward Sword Zelda. Point blank period, I would not change an absolute detail about Skyward Sword Zelda. And if I see anybody coming for Skyward Sword Zelda, I'm sorry, you're just incorrect. You're just wrong because she is amazing. I loved seeing Zelda like this. I just loved seeing her, instead of in a princess role, kind of just being your childhood friend and then eventually later on in the story, stepping into this goddess role, which is so ethereal ethereal and beautiful. And since I'm already talking about it, let's just go ahead and start off with this goddess look over here to the right. And honestly, I know some of y'all are about to say, oh, it's just a white dress. Girl, it is so much more than that. It is not just a white dress. I love the long flowy sleeves. I love the detail around the neck. I love the pieces in the hair. I just think this look, she has never looked more beautiful. And y'all, even her Skyloft look, I mean, this is a very different look for Zelda. This is the first time that we've gotten like anything that looks like this for her, and so it's just a really nice change. This dark pink on her looks really, really great. I love the sailcloth kind of shawl wrapped around her shoulders. I love the blue sailcloth on the side with the gold belt wrapped around her. I mean, this look is just amazing. If you also love Skyward Sword Zelda as much as I do, make sure to subscribe to the channel and stick around because I would absolutely love to have a conversation about it in the comments. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I feel like A Link Between Worlds doesn't get talked about that frequently. Like, there's just something about it in the Zelda community, at least the parts that I'm in, that a lot of people don't really talk about this game, which I feel like is such a missed opportunity. It's really, really great. For this particular Zelda, though, it is a return to the standard kind of Zelda look, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I still love the look. I love the tassels on the belt. I think it all looks great. I think this is such a classic outfit for Zelda, and I see why they keep using it because it is so great. Also, I'm still looking at these Triforce earrings. If anybody knows where to get them, please help a guy out. Ah, Breath of the Wild Zelda. Such a great iteration of Zelda. I would say that this Zelda is a lot of people's favorite, and I completely understand why. I mean, just the amount of personality and character that they were able to put into her storyline in this game is absolutely amazing, and I just really, really felt a connection to this Zelda in a way that I hadn't felt with a lot of previous Zeldas. What I think is so fantastic about this look in Breath of the Wild is that it it fits the vibe of the game entirely. In Breath of the Wild, you feel like you were experiencing an adventure that you had never experienced before in a Zelda game, and I feel like this outfit captures that vibe. This is perfect for like an adventuring outfit with the pants and the boots. I think that's great. I love the blue. Like I said, we don't get a lot of Zelda in blue, and so I feel like this was a perfect opportunity to do so. But if you want to talk about a blue look, I mean, I need to talk about this look. I would be amiss to not talk about this look. This is her, like, princess regal kind of outfit that she wears in the beginning of the game before the Great Calamity happens, and this look is everything to me. I would say this is probably one of the most top-tier looks in the entire list that we could talk about today. <laughs> In Tears of the Kingdom, even though it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild, we do get a very different look for Zelda, with two different outfits and a cut hairstyle. Remember how for Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 Zelda, I was talking about how I didn't love the bob and how it didn't like fit the look and it didn't look good on her? 
this is the complete opposite of that. I feel like the cut hair on this absolutely works and fits with the outfit that she has going on. I think that it's really, really great, and I'm so happy that they decided to go with a shorter-haired Zelda for this game. But the look today that I really would like to give flowers to is her Zonai look, and I think that this look kind of gives her goddess Hylia look in Skyward Sword. It just gives goddess. It gives regal. I love everything about this outfit, and when in the game I saw her in this outfit for the first time and she came out, I audibly gasped. That was how impressed I was with this outfit. I love the Zonai pieces on the front of the dress. I love the designs on the dress. I love the earrings, the color green. Everything about this is really, really great. <laughs> We have finally made it up to Echoes of Wisdom, which is the reason we're doing this video today, to celebrate all things Zelda, and honestly, I am so excited that Zelda is probably going to be getting a lot of different looks in this game, but we're going to talk about this look first. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm not crazy about this look. I don't think it's anything spectacular. It is kind of just, you know, a, a purple and white dress. It's not anything crazy. But what I do love about it is the cloak. I think the cloak is the best part because it kind of adds this sense of darkness and mystery to the look to enforce how dark this game could potentially be with the still world. I also think I might love it just because it kind of reminds me of Twilight Princess Zelda in the very beginning of that game when she wore a cloak. I think it may be giving a little bit of that. But just because we went through all the timeline Zeldas doesn't mean that we're done. There are a lot of other Zeldas that I would just like to incorporate in this video just to include them for fun, one of those being Sheik. And I mean, y'all, again, spoiler alert, if you didn't know, Sheik is Zelda. I'm sorry to be the person to tell you if you didn't already know. I kind of just want to do a lightning round of some of these other versions of Zelda, and I had to start with Sheik because I love Sheik's look. I just think everything about it is so great. I mean, the skin-tight ninja suit, the flowing fabric behind it, the braid in the back, I think that Sheik has always looked good and will never not look good. Hyrule Warrior Zelda is the Zelda that I was hinting at earlier when I talked about how I loved the armory look on Zelda, and I needed to include her because this look is probably one of the best we have ever received, if not will ever receive, of Zelda in the entire series. She is ready for battle. I think that's what I love so much about this look, is that it's very much giving Athena. It's giving, like, goddess of the battlefield. I love all the armor pieces. It's the boots. It's the armor plate on the chest. I think that this is just such a great interpretation for a game like Hyrule Warriors. Being in a different universe and a separate kind of world than the regular Zelda timeline, being a part of Hyrule Warriors, an intense fighting game, I love that they stuck with like the classic Zelda look and didn't stray too far from it, but still made her look battle ready and fit in the universe. Next up, let's talk about Smash Bros. Zelda, and Smash Bros. Zelda has always been something that has been up to change in like pretty much every single game they've changed up her look, I think just to keep it fresh and exciting, kind of how they've done with Link recently, and I love that they chose to do this look for Zelda. I mean, like I've been saying, this is the classic look for Zelda, so I'm surprised it took them this long to use this particular look, but I think that it looks great and I'm I'm really really happy that they decided to go with this one for ultimate also i don't know if this just happens to be the first time i'm getting like a clear shot of zelda's shoes but this might be the best pair of shoes i've seen today now, Zelda Cadence of Hyrule is a game that I have actually never played before, so if you've played this game and think that me as a Zelda fan would love it, definitely let me know down in the comments below if I should give this game a try. As for Zelda's look in this game, I think that it's very, very good. I love that we kind of swapped over to the purple that I like. We're wearing more of a tunic outfit, kind of like Link does. I love this gold accessory on the belt. I think that all of this looks really, really good. It stays very true to the Zelda outfit with just minor changes. For our next Zelda I gotta start with a question. How many of y'all knew that The Legend of Zelda actually had a cartoon? Well, I did because I watched it. This version of Zelda was definitely interesting and it was very, very comedic, which I feel like we don't get a lot of comedic Zelda, so I don't know. I was kind of into it for that sense, but just talking about the look, I think the vest is cute. I do like the puffy sleeves on this and I do like the darker tones of the entire outfit as a whole. I think it's not often that we get to see Zelda in a lot of darker colors so I think that this works out pretty well. Oh god, and speaking of comedic Zeldas, I guess I have to talk about the CDI version of Zelda. Not like I've ever played this game or know anything about it, but this version of Zelda is... Uh, yeah. Look, I'm sorry if anybody has a particular fondness for this version of Zelda, but I just cannot. The look is not awful, it's not terrible, I don't hate the vest, but girl, it's, it's not it. This Zelda makes me want to run for the hills. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, there you have it. We talked about most, if not all, of the Zeldas and their fashions in today's video, and my final judgment, my final analysis is going to be I love Skyward Sword Zelda and Twilight Princess Zelda, with my least favorites being CDI Zelda and Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 Zelda. Definitely let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of the comments I made today, and also let me know if you're excited for Echoes of Wisdom to come out soon. Oh, I can't believe that this exists.